take a look at the minutes from the February 27th meeting. That was our special session. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, that was our regular session. Uh, anybody have any uh, comments or changes to the minutes from the 27th? I would entertain a motion meant to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Goodman, seconded by Smith. Those in favor, signify by raising the right hand. It is. I believe that was Mr. Fitzwater. That was actually. I'm sorry. Six zero. Fitzwater. Six zero. Uh, by the way, there's six of us tonight. Uh, Councilman Heidi is ill. Uh, we also had a special session meeting on March the 13th. Uh, everybody has a chance to look at those minutes. I'd entertain a similar motion, then. So moved. Uh, se second. Seconded by uh, Councilman Garrett. <coughs> those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. And that is unanimous also. Thank you very much. The uh, minutes from the Board of uh, Public Works and Safety for uh, uh, February the 1st and uh, 15th. Our, uh, in March 1st were for information only. Uh, we have no communications tonight. We're going to have a short meeting tonight. We're going to have the reports from the department heads and then we're going to adjourn and meet in, over at the jail for the jail tour. The sheriff is uh, waiting to take us all through the jail and show us uh, the situation with the jail so we have a better idea of the concerns that he is having along with the rest of the county over our current facility over there. Uh, by uh, statute, uh, the open door policy, uh, we there is some latitude for us to uh, Adjourn and go over for what? What is it referred to, uh, Andy? As a well, you can do an on-site inspection of the facility of anyone essentially asking for assistance from uh, the, the city, and so you can simply adjourn the meeting. All of you can go over there. It's not an issue with notice. It's read out of the definition of meeting entirely. So right. It's it's an meeting. information gathering session, yeah. uh, and we wouldn't take any action of any kind of course is just to go look see uh, and of course the uh, the issue of the uh, that the county is looking for from the city is down the road a uh, letter of support for the uh, building of the new jail at, at the point in time when they they're looking at that in the future so keep that in mind as you're going down and looking things over that's what the mission's about <coughs> Thank you, Councilor. Okay. With that being said, let's get right into our department heads <laughs> meetings. Our department heads reports. Uh, <coughs> Chief Butler. Good evening. Good evening, Tom. <coughs> the month of February, I struck the fires one in the city, one in Rochester Township. Mutual aids, one in Union Township. Auto fire alarms, one in the city. Illegal burns, one in Rochester Township. Grass fires, one in Richland Township. Accidents, three in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Medical assist, um, 15 in the city, six in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Drove the ambulance once. CO checks, one in the city, one in Rochester Township, and we had one elevator rescue in the city. Had a total of 34 runs and one training session. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Oh, I've got to ask. Anybody, <laughs> anybody interested up here? <coughs> An elevator rescue? Yeah, over at RTC, uh, apparently the cleaning lady's cart got stuck in the door below and the elevator rose because the bottom door wasn't shut. It stalled out, so we had to go. <laughs> retrieve her from her peril. Well, you can be thankful that Chief Shots is not here this evening because he would get up and say, things are looking up at the fire department. Uh, well, yeah, we, <laughs> he has something to say. Yeah, more, more than a cat in the tree sometimes. <laughs> Any other questions for Tom? Thank, Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll go down to uh, Marcus Hall. That's got to be a record for you. That's got to be a record for you. 
<laughs> for the month of March, we in the lab have normal plant testing. We sit in our metals and mercury core reset core reset testing. We just had living waters come to set up our chemical building. They have been the leak sensors for our E. coli season. E. coli season will start on the first. I'm finishing up my annual uh, IDM report for 2017. Uh, finishing up Rochester Metals correlated testing also. <clears throat> In the plant, our current update on the grip machine that is finally back online. Space and engineering from Fort Wayne, put that back in place. <coughs> D&D electrics from uh, Edna Green, uh, installed it. <clears throat> our trickling filter arm stopped and we broke our internal brake. We removed the brake and now it's working working properly. Uh, update on our process construction. Our chemical building, the concrete, is complete around the building. Now they're installing the handrails inside. In collections, we had normal locates. And then on uh, 601 West 11th Street, we uh, uh, did another dye test and we uh, confirmed another property that's on city sewer and uh, didn't have a bill, so we're going forward with that. <clears throat> then we had two lift stations down. We pulled both pumps, cleaned them, and then we're both back online. <clears throat> That's all I have. Okay. Any uh, questions? <coughs> I didn't know E. coli had a season. What? <clears throat> Can you explain that? Uh, we, we chlorinate from April 1st to October 31st. That's our chlorination season. And then when we don't do that, we don't treat up chlorine sulfur dioxide. <clears throat> sweeping the streets um, in the at the park we've been uh, got the two guys back to work now and uh, one's uh, been picking up leaves and trying to clean up the city park and the other one's been uh, working on the bathroom out of fanslers painting it and uh, putting in new partitions and um, trying to get that ready to go for the uh, spring and that's about all I got right now and then other park news, I got uh, a bunch of signs and stuff to put up for the uh, Frisbee golf course and uh, uh, various yes. Uh, yes. In, in the disc golf course and stuff like that too. So we have a tournament coming up May the 26th at the mm -hmm. city park for the disc golf course. Uh, a gentleman here at the park board meeting uh, from the South Bend Club group. Mm -hmm. They do they tour different tournaments in different locations. He's working, uh, having work with Kim uh, uh, on, on that project. So we're getting things spruced up for the 26th. we will be hearing more about that. Any uh, questions for Lenny? And tomorrow, by the way, uh, we'll be uh, putting that drywall in out on Arrowhead. Okay. Yeah, that we're all ready to go. I was going to do it tomorrow, uh, Thursday, but Got to look at the forecast, and tomorrow's going to be a much better day for it. So, um, after our last rain, it's a horrendous amount. Although we didn't get what they got up north, thank goodness. But uh, one of our high flooding areas in, in events like that is over at Rochester Boulevard, Arrowhead, and Clover. That area over there, we've had an analysis of the situation over there. I think we can give them some relief by putting up. Putting a drywell in, where is that? 1200 count uh, drywell, it's uh, <coughs> the last, uh, it's on the Arrowhead, uh, around the 1500 block of Arrowhead. Um, we're going to set a 1200 gallon drywell and uh, put uh, number, number five, <coughs> commercial 
uh, landscaping rock around the outside of it and stub it, stub in the manholes and uh, it, it should help them tremendously. I mean, the water ain't gonna, it ain't going to be a, a cure, but it, the water shouldn't stand there for days. It should be gone within hours instead of days. And it shouldn't flood like it, it, it does now. <clears throat> so. <coughs> Questions for me? It's on the, by the RVs and Crow River. Has that road been redone? No. Mm -hmm. um, there, the uh, air marking or whoever gets the uh, striping out there uh, can't do it until the you know, weather gets breaks and gets okay. a little bit warmer and stuff. So, well, plus we get being rainy, have to talk to the mayor about a couple issues with that out there. But I was curious. We got all the stuff ready to go. It's just what get pulling the trigger, and getting it going. Were they working on the on the uh, new lights for down there though? I saw a utility truck in front of. Yeah, Randy had got a hold of. Uh, Duke and they got the LEDs put in. I guess I had been down to see them, but Randy went down I think this morning and seen them and said they looked pretty good. So yeah, we initiated uh, <clears throat> the installation down there for LEDs. That was awfully dark down there. Yeah, it was yeah. a dark intersection out there. Yes, I was. I went out there last night. At one point, and the airplanes are going to land there, <laughs> <laughs> but but they need it. They need it there with the semi traffic. Maybe go out there. There. What's that? Actually, yeah, maybe drive down there, and see what's up. Knock yourself out there. All right. Yeah, I'll get them out. It, 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 it is pretty impressive if you've not seen the LEDs. They're pretty powerful. Excellent. Good Thanks. job on me for Thank level you. two. You guys have been on top of that. What's been going on? Yep. We tried to, bud. 31, 31 away. Country Club had some. Or Country Club had some. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> You know his almost address. Did, you almost didn't That's not get my, my uh, wreck in the garage. <laughs> speaking, of, uh, speaking of LED lighting, uh, I'm hoping to hand Randy another project here very soon, but I talked to Duke just yesterday, and we've got a process right now for our street lights. Some of you may have seen red or yellow caution tape wrapped around them. Onto them. We just started that. Our Board of Works members carry a roll of tape around, and our two police officers who work at night have two rolls of tape. And if they see a light that's out, they just get out and tie a bow on it. Then the next day, the street department, Lenny's group, will follow around. If they see a tape light, they get out and write down all the information. It's pretty hard to get the information off of them in the middle of the night. So they follow up and do that, and then take the tape off, and we get it, that information to Duke, and they get them fixed. Well, it, it's working pretty well, but there's a lot of it. Uh, one of the uh, guys who has serviced those lights periodically was telling us that uh, they open up those clamshell lights. Now, you're talking lights, some of them are 50 years old. The wires will disintegrate, they're so old. So I got a hold of Duke yesterday and said, hey, um, you know, we've been paying a long time a maintenance fee and such for lights that are now 50 years old. What's your replacement plan? Well, that kind of made them scratch their head. They don't have a lot of people asking them that, so they don't have them. And they said, I don't think we have a plan as such, but we can certainly put one together. So that's what they're doing. They're pulling a plan together to get our, get our lights updated. And of course, the new generation would be LED. Okay, uh, Randy. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Fourth Street bids were reviewed by Donahue, and on the 22nd, the uh, job for the 4th Street project was awarded the EMB paving. Their bid was $1,684,175.54. Which, and, uh, the good news is uh, they came in about 300000 less than what we were uh, forecasting that project would run. So <clears throat> that was a, Those other two bids were competitive as well. So they were. They were. Yeah, the bids come in with six, six and a half percent, 
within each other, yeah. and they was all under the engineer's estimate. Yeah. Uh, 7th Street, uh, I got light, we got lights being quoted, and then we was waiting for the boundary survey, but I talked to the surveyor tonight, and they was out staking it, the boundaries on the 7th Street parking lots. <coughs> um, then City Hall, D&D, got the bid for the generator here. And then DJ from D&D &D shot in, she shots and myself met, we had a meeting to go over the installation and make sure everybody was on to answer any questions or that before we get going. Then yeah, down at 25 in Roush Place, they were put in the 23rd and four LED lights. And then the other thing is I've been working on adding storm sewers and sanitaries to the GIS map so that we could get it more up to date. I, I want to compliment Randy on the uh, four lights down there at 25 and Roush. Uh, you got that done in, in an expeditious manner. I don't know Duke jumping on things quite as quickly as that project. You did a good job working with him on that. <clears throat> Any questions for Randy? Looks like we need to get him a couple more projects. He's, yes, sir. He's, 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 busy. he's getting them knocked off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's getting them knocked off. Really. You're doing a good job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, we have uh, another bit of information I want to share with you. I sent you all the email. Since Chief Shots is not here, I'll give you the abbreviated version of. Uh, uh, the outcome of our public safety software. Uh, last week, I was on the phone for about an hour with uh, uh, Fran Hefner, the president of Cody Software Systems out of Hershey, Pennsylvania, uh, roughing out some details of what uh, they had provided for information as to what they can do for us here as a public safety software basically making us a standalone customer licensed by them and covering our needs with uh, their software. If you remember, we had received the proposal from, the latest proposal from the city was, uh, okay. or, I'm sorry, the county, thank you. <coughs> it was about uh, seven page memorandum that uh, basically the cost was going to be, uh, as a user, we were going to be a user going to be $38,000 a year for us to be a user and that was a guarantee for 10 years uh, not to increase and that was a major question we had when we sent back uh, uh, questions after reviewing the memorandum. First one on the list was that $38,000 a year that could be interpreted to mean that's a commitment you have on an annual basis or that's a 10-year commitment that you make. Are we being asked to commit to 38,000 or 380,000? And especially any of you that were at the special meeting, and no, remember the county folks that were here, they had to go back and check that out. Uh, was it last week you and I were together? Uh, Correct. And, uh, Attorney Heller had come to see you. We talked and, and he checked on that guy. If you want to be here. Which, and I think, Andy, I mean, we, I think all three of us here came to the same conclusion there needed to be clarification on that statement. But uh, thank you for digging deep into that because uh, it could have been interpreted that you get out the second year if you want to and you'd only be out $38,000. No, that's not true. Uh, if you bail out, you're gonna pay the, the whole thing. Uh, so you pay two years of commitment, 38,000 each year, and you go out and bail out the third year, you're gonna pay 300,000 to get out. That didn't seem like a very palatable situation to be in. Uh, and I don't know if the county has a 10-year commitment or not, but we didn't feel like we wanted to jump into that. And the rest of the questions were, we didn't really get any uh, 
answers on the rest of the questions. So with that being said, we stepped up our conversations with Cody, got a, got a, uh, a written proposal from them, and uh, much, much easier to digest. It was a page and a half. Uh, gave us a three-year proposal. The uh, initial setup for the first year would be $19,000 that covered uh, the software costs and such. Um, and uh, 10,000 of that is the, the annual fee. So for three years, we would be paying about $40,000. And uh, after that, the increase in cost was not to increase uh, more than, uh, I think it was a percent and a half if there was any increase even at all. But so we went from 38,000 basically to looking at 10,000. So that was pretty powerful. <clears throat> then after conversations with uh, Ms. Hefner and uh, Matt, Lieutenant Campbell and Chief Shots, working through all the details of what the software will do and what we need, it was decided that it looked pretty attractive. And so we decided, uh, took it to the Board of Works, gave the uh, explanation of uh, the system, uh, co uh, Andy recommended go in that direction, and so we decided to sign the contract with him. So that's where we are. We still have to buy a, a server, which is about a $23,000 commitment, but that was something we were going to have to do with the Spillman program also. Uh, it just for <coughs> what we need, the Cody makes quite a bit more sense. Uh, you're driving a Lamborghini in the Spillman world, and we're probably more in a, I'd say a Corvette. <laughs> what do you think, Corvette? Little, it's a little less than a Lamborghini, isn't it? Yeah. You're James yeah. Bond. I don't think I don't know either one of them, so don't <laughs> uh, 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 Are you sure it's I've been man? sure to come. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Ooh. that's, that, that's what, that's what prompted that. So, was the uh, Cody software? Uh, if I remember the conversation from weeks or months ago, I guess it was. The Rochester police are really familiar with that software already. Yeah. So the learning curve is next to nothing as well, correct? Yes, and I'll tell you, Marty. After an hour talking to this lady it was it I was blown away by it she was so impressive she's the owner it's a female owned company which we were never told either and that is a government plus in a lot of areas yeah. they are much more active in Indiana than we were led to believe they are uh, they were uh, working with the, the DNR they're working with the excise folks and there are a couple other state agencies that they're working with too, aside from a couple of municipalities. Uh, she says, Mayor, you have my cell phone now. If you ever have any problems, call me. She was not aware of any issues over the years with uh, the county. Uh, she says, our, our logs just do not show that. She says, I guarantee you though, if there's a problem, we will be there. So it was pretty good talking to her. And, Finding out the history of the company, uh, her husband had uh, worked for the government. Uh, they go back to uh, Vietnam days. Uh, he had was part of an IT world that I didn't even know these people existed in Vietnam. Black ops who used to drop into Laos and Cambodia and pick up <coughs> intelligence information, IT type of information, and bug out. It's the right term, I guess. Uh, and then he started his own company, his software company, out, out of the service. He passed away uh, about five, six years ago, and she has continued in the business very sharply, very sharply. So anyway, that's, that's what prompted that activity. Um, now, without any further ado, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn, and we'll... We'll, we'll head down to the jail. Uh, again, the sheriff had the one request that I've already told you about. Also, he asked that we enter on the Madison Street side, the front, right there. Anywhere else might get us locked up. So. <laughs>
<laughs> no, right there on the Madison Street side. So, okay, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Smith. Second by Goodman. Those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you all. Go to jail.